I'm Anthony Chan, consultant rheumatologist from London, United Kingdom. I'm reporting here from Yula 2023 in Milan for Room Now. One of the areas that uh, we have been looking over the years is the delay to diagnosis in the rheumatic conditions, in particular in axial spondyloarthritis, where there is an eight and a half year delay uh, from symptom onset to diagnosis. And this seems to be universal across the world. And there are areas where uh, we are starting to make some inroads into reducing the time to diagnosis. What is important is to try to understand what ex exactly happens in, in clinical practice uh, when, when patients present with uh, undefined chronic back pain and what is the, the evolution over the time uh, of these patients, how many uh, actually have exospondylo arthritis and how many don't. In order to, to do this, uh, this needs uh, a proper study. And here at uh, EULA 2023, there is a, a, a presentation. Uh, this is the oral presentation number five. Uh, this is from the SPACE study or the spondyloarthritis court early study. And this is an interesting study presented here where they looked at patients presenting with uh, undefined uh, chronic back pain. This is back pain for more than uh, three months in, in patients less than 45 years of age. So a typical uh, criteria for us to make a diagnosis of ex axial spa and also for classification. They followed patients for two years uh, during the study and these patients had a clinical assessment, they had uh, investigations including a CRP and also uh, checking the B27 status and also having an MRI scan of the spine and sacroiliac joint. Uh, what happened at baseline is that 32 percent of these patients with chronic back pain were diagnosed with axial spondyloarthritis at baseline and 68 percent were non-axial spondyloarthritis. The, these patients were then followed up over a period of two years and the gold standard was a diagnosis of axial spondyloarthritis at two years. So did the patients who were diagnosed at the baseline, did they remain axial spondyloarthritis later on? Uh, or were the diagnosis changed clinically? And in the same way, those who had no exospondyloarthritis, did they become exospondyloarthritis later on? So that was how this, the study was designed. At two years, from a start of 32%, uh, the final two-year diagnosis uh, was in exospondyloarthritis was 30%. There were 6% of patients who the diagnosis was changed from the initial diagnosis of axial spondyloarthritis uh, to a, a different non axial spondyloarthritis diagnosis. Equally, 9% of patients from the other group, from the non axial spondyloarthritis group, uh, were later on uh, diagnosed as having axial spondyloarthritis. So the overall numbers were 32% at baseline, going to 30% uh, at two years for the exospondylo arthritis group and in the non exospondylo arthritis group, 68% at baseline going to a drop to 56% as some of them had were later on diagnosed with exospondylo arthritis. Interestingly, there's also an undefined group in the middle of 14%, which was reported. And these patients probably had a mixture of uh, symptoms, but not enough for the clinician to fully diagnose with a level of confidence that this was exospondylo arthritis. The level of confidence in this study was between 8.1 to 8.7 on a scale of 0 to 10, where 10 was being very confident. And this study also uh, highlighted to us uh, some important uh, features at baseline that would help um, sustain the diagnosis of axial arthritis over the two-year period. And in this study, they found that the best predictor would be imaging. So having a positive MRI scan at the start of the disease, MRI scan of the uh, spine and sacroiliac joint uh, would predict uh, consistency and uh, uh, stability of the diagnosis over two years. Uh, other factors also include uh, having HLA-B27. Some of the other features did not feature strongly. Uh, and, and these were the, some of the features that we often see in, a, in, in and use in, in the clinics, such as the presence of extraticular manifestations, respond to NSAIDs and family history. Uh, they did help, but they did not weigh as strongly as imaging and then followed by HLA-B27 positivity. So this study uh, shows us that it is possible to make an early diagnosis of, uh, 
of um, exospondyloarthritis, uh, at least a third of patients that we diagnose at baseline uh, will remain with that diagnosis uh, and in a two-year period. So this helps us in terms of our, our process of trying to make early diagnosis of exospondyloarthritis, having the level of confidence, uh, but also understanding that some of these chronic back pain patients who may not fully um, show the full features of arthritis may actually evolve over time to have arthritis in that period of time. And we know that there are good predictors for this, uh, including uh, HLA-B27 positivity and also um, a male disease in, in some of these patients. So you also need to exclude um, the fact that uh, some of these patients may have uh, negative uh, x-rays at the beginning, but may have positive MRI scans uh, later on in disease. So a very careful follow-up of these patients would be necessary in order for us not to miss this diagnosis. So I think this is an interesting study and, uh, and uh, here presented at uh, Milan in uh, EULA 2023 and it certainly helps with our understanding and our process of uh, making earlier diagnosis uh, for patients with excess bondular arthritis. I'm Anthony Chan reporting here for Room Now uh, in Milan at EULA 2023.